and hello good people of the internet, it is I, Tommy Kelly, this is Adventures in Woo Woo and welcome to the January 2022, that's so weird to say, um, one card 40 servants divinations that we do every month and um, people over on Patreon get to send in a question, I pick a card and say what I think it means and uh, yeah so it's the 40 servants which is the deck that I came up with five years ago now and uh, it's both a divination deck and some servitors in there too, if you're into such a thing. But uh, we'll get in straight away because it's very cold here today. This is probably the coldest um, it's been in Ravensdale, here in the forest. This Ravensdale forest, I'm sure most of you know, this is where I usually hang out. Um, yeah, it's very cold. Um, we're still having a mild enough winter here uh, so far in Ireland, but uh, it's still very cold. Ladina, is there a deity that's trying to get my attention? And is it who I think it is? Let me see, let's get these cards out. Do a bit of a shuffle. Now, I have already chosen a card in the car to make sure I'm in the right mental space or the right way to, to actually do these divinations, which I recommend that people should do. Just before you do a divination for anyone else or even for yourself, just pick a card. Should I do this? Is this, okay. And there's the card that's jumping out for you, Ladina. Should I do this? Um, uh, Divination, I'm in the right space for it. So, uh, Ladina wants to know, is there a deity reaching out? And it is who she thinks it is. The Explorer, it's hard to see. Usually I know by the screen what uh, what it is. Um, the Explorer. So that's it, like obviously about consciousness exploration and uh, widening your kind of field of view or going outside of, you know, just an expansion of your consciousness, your awareness, your spirituality, your uh, thing. So it would suggest to me that rather than there's something reaching out to you, that you are in some way reaching out to it. And that it's it's kind of, it could be, it would suggest to you that it's something new, not someone that you've previously had an experience with. Um, that there's some sort of expansiveness. Yeah, it's like you're kind of transversing out and coming across some new territory. That's what it feels like to me. So uh, that's an interesting. So the actual question, is it who I think it is? Unless, if it's, unless it's someone completely new, then no. Dylan, how can I make sure our business is successful? Well, if we all knew that, what would we, what would we uh, aim to achieve if we knew we wouldn't fail? Anyway, let's see. What do you need to do, Dylan? make a business success. Okay. The guru. So the guru is about practical knowledge or actually doing things rather than theory. So in the case of say a business, I don't know nothing about your business, but it would be rather than doing the market research, rather than doing the um, thinking about it, what would be the best kind of business thing to do? There's a kind of an element of just doing it using, utilizing your skills already to do it and to kind of uh, move more into a movement of actual action and stuff rather than just, um, you know, rather than just kind of, not necessarily just thinking about it, but rather than just the theory behind it. Like it would be a case of rather than being, I don't know how relevant this will be to your um, business thing, but it just kind of explains the guru a bit. Rather than being an armchair magician where you just know all the knowledge, it's the a cultist or a magician who actually does the rituals. So there's something about actually doing something rather than uh, sitting and just knowing it. Or, you know, it's, it's getting into action. There's some sort of call to action involved there. And if you're in a, setting up a business, that would be obvious enough that, you know, just do it. But if you're already set up and you're ready to go or you're already in it, there'd be some sort of notion of moving forward and actually doing something rather than just thinking about it. That's the best I can offer on that. And I hope it does work out well for you. Uh, Tim. Do they have a message for me? Cheers, mate. Cheers to you. Let me see. What do you want to tell Tim? And there's a card coming straight out. So, the monk. The monk is about silence and retreat and about going back into yourself and kind of coming away from the world. Um, and becoming more centered and kind of the removal of unneeded baggage 
they're not in a kind of let's throw everything out let's leave <laughs> you know let's leave the house let's throw away the key but like almost like a retreat um, rather than necessarily a, a long you know or um, it's something you do for the rest of your life but it, it, this kind of needs to go back into refuge into a sanctuary into kind of abiding within <sighs> Social media break would be a good example of it, or you know, um, literally going on a retreat, a meditation retreat, or some sort of way of going back into silence to simplify things. Th things have possibly are a bit too complicated, and you need to just go back into silence or simp uh, simplicity. And it's not—it's a nice thing. It's not like you know you're being banished to your room, or uh, you know as a kid, or you're not. It's not like you're. You have to give up your favorite toys or, or toys or whatever. Like you're, it's not like give up things that you enjoy. It's just make things more simple. Cash, is there anything I need to focus on this month? Nice birds chirping over there. Okay. The idea. So new ideas, the creation of new events, the creation of new thoughts, new movement, or more, this seems to be better, is the idea of bringing something new in, that it's like a new idea, a new a freshness to it, that a new approach, or that there's something. So it's not, I think what it is, it's not like, say, say you're learning the piano, and you're, you're, get, you're kind of stuck. And you go, well, maybe a good thing would be to um, learn something else. Like, I'll pick up violin and that'll get me. I mean, sometimes that's great advice, but this is more about, seems to be about doing something fresh within the piano sphere of things in order to make the whole thing, ra you know, have a new idea, be more creative, more expansive, rather than going in a completely different direction. So, say, if we were putting it to do with, <coughs> excuse me, not COVID, if we were going to do it around, say, creative writing, it would be about trying to inject something into that rather than going off and doing something completely different like blogging or you know um, non-fiction writing in, in, in the hope that that would kind of add to it it's uh, some sort of seed within something that's already there a freshness freshness is the word that's coming to mind for me so hope that helps so Safira is there a certain servitor I should focus on with this on this month It's kind of a weird question, I was just thinking, not a weird question, but how could the answer to that be no? Because you're going to get a card no matter, no matter what. So that's what could be one maybe to think about something along those lines, asking those questions again, to leave open for how would you get a no response. Anyway, we have the protector. So think about protection and think about how you can... Um, more safeguard the things around you and often the thing I find when saying about protection is that, that there's not necessarily that there's something bad going to happen that you have to worry about that you have to protect yourself just kind of look after yourself that's the kind of a you know make sure you're looking after yourself it's the kind of gist of what I'm getting from it rather than something's going to happen on the bad horizon you prepare for it it's definitely not the feeling I'm getting now more look after yourself make sure you're doing well make sure your mental health well your emotional health your physical health that you're looking after yourself and your needs and your wants and uh yeah, so look after yourself for a month. Take yourself out for a few dates and have some fun. Okay, Craig. Which archetypical servitor is gaining momentum to be the overall influence in my life this next 12 months? Again, this is a question that doesn't allow for none, <laughs> you know, or many, or whatever. But I understand that when you're doing a one card reading something like this that it's hard to have a succinct or kind of a question that doesn't really need you know to, to kind of fit to a, to a one card reading I understand that but uh, we'll see but just uh, allow when choosing questions for one card readings just the wording of them just to be you know because there's a presupposition in that 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 is something that's going to happen and it might be a thing that's going to happen I'm not saying it isn't but you know it has to be an allowance that it mightn't The dead. So I just want to be very clear on what your question actually was. Which archetypal ever is gaining momentum to be the overall influence? So that the dead, of course, is to do with ancestors and it's to do with previous knowledge and previous experience. And not necessarily to do with debt, apart from what it is. Um, 
something that's gaining momentum is this kind of, it could be many things you will notice better, it could be a kind of acknowledgement of, you know, your mortality. It could be learning from the past. It could be seeing that all of the things that have happened to humanity or in your family or in your life up to now. And, you know, that kind of notion of not making the same mistakes or some sort of thing. But again, it could be ancestor work. It's hard to know without knowing exactly what you're kind of, what you're, you're working towards. But let me see if I can get a, an intuit. It seems to be something to do with ancestry but in a, something to do with childhood I don't know take that for what it is just something that came into my head as I was trying to think of it not psychic but sometimes you can get a flash of these things but yeah the dead learning from the past do, do, do. Rory what do I need what do I need to be to get my life back on track? Oh, sorry. Who do I need to... Who do I need to be to get my life back on track? You, Rory. Let's see what the card says. Who do I need to be to get my life back on track? It's an interesting question. Again, there's a presupposition in that question. There's a need we all have... I think when you come to stuff in spirituality and awakening or meditation or whatever it is that we do around here in the kind of field that you need to fix yourself and there's something I definitely felt for a long while that there's something wrong with me inherently wrong with that I need to fix and of course if we are all aspects of divinity which I'm pretty certain we are um, then we're a divine thing warts and all is, is things so to, be, to feel that there's something wrong with yourself probably not the best approach now that's not to say we can't improve ourselves or try to be better people or that we can that excuses all our shitty behavior but coming from a fundamental point of I need to fix myself or I'm not good enough or who do I need to be to get my life back in track so I'm going to change the question on you sorry Rory and go what do I need to know to get my life back in track please forgive me if that's not what you want but that's what I'm gonna do the mother you need to love yourself you need to feel secure you need to feel wanted you need to feel nourished you need to feel you need to feel welcomed you need to feel wanted and all of these things will uh, if you're looking for them externally are uh, at most ever only ever going to be fleeting and will be tinged with sorrow in a sense because the, because of the fleeting nature of it and that a hug can only last for a while um, unless you're going for some more record and then it, you know it might be too long but um, so you're going to have to look for these things within yourself so who to go back there I suppose your own question who do you need to be you need someone who loves yourself more who nurtures yourself who looks after yourself who in the way a mother would towards a child and in that kind of absolute unconditional love that doesn't even have to be thought about now you don't have to switch it on you don't have to decide to do it um, it's just a natural outpouring of attention care love wanting only the best in its most natural state let's not say all mothers are like that but you know in the most kind of archetypical sense so uh, yeah hope you're okay Rory possibly reading too much into your question there but um, you know Look after yourself. So, I'm just going to interrupt <laughs> uh, previous Tommy from to uh, from future Tommy. I noticed when I had finished the video that I had uh, missed out some questions from Patreon. And uh, the way that Patreon kind of shows the comments on some of the threads, you can kind of miss some. So uh, I'll go back. So Frocco, long time lurker, first time inquirer. What is required of me to make the book project a success? Okay, Let's see what's. See what comes out. Oh, big two of them. And so we have the opposer and the monk. Okay, so be aware of outside obstacles, be that people, institutions, or um, no. What it's saying is 
there is outside obstacles to uh, book publishing, obviously, and there's a lot of kind of things that you can be aware of and ha you know come up against and all of that thing. But the, because it's the monk, what it's saying to kind of pull back from all of that and don't, don't get too bogged down in all of that in the kind of logistics of the publishing, uh, but all that, and just keep it as simple as you possibly can, and um, don't clutter it too much. Don't be concerned yourself too much with all the things that can hold you back or that can go wrong or the, the red tape or the administration or the contracts or don't worry too much about it just focus on the simplicity of, of these things so that's what I say Jason magically or spiritually what should I pay attention to in the next month are we doing well Jason Okay. The balance are, well, clearly enough, being in balance, man. Um, don't buy, try to do too much. Don't, you know, don't go in one area. And keep all things in balance. Be that spiritually, um, mentally, physically, emotionally. That uh, Remember that spirituality is a part of your life, not the thing you do. It's not the defining moment of, you, uh, of who you are. It's kind of a uh, supplemental part in the sense of that you also ha are here to do something that r other than just the spirituality things you know it's like don't forget you're also a musician you know or, or you're also you know your partner you're also a son uh, or, or whatever you know there's all of these other things and it's easy to kind of i suppose get too embedded in the whole kind of spiritual thing that you forget to have a life and you know of course we're here to have a life so that's one aspect of the balance thing, but you know, just keep everything in balance. Abraxas, which, which decision is the best for both of us? Sounds like a country and western song, Abraxas. But to make light of your question. Well, to make light of your question, but in a, in a fun way, and a, not in a... Shut up, Tommy. What's the best decision for both of us? for both of you the gatekeeper the decision that allows access to something that you previously wouldn't have had access to let me see can I give an example what's the best decision for both of us should we move in together yes uh, that's what the cards are saying don't blame me if it goes all askew um, or something, yeah, something that, that, that whatever the, the, the decision is or the question is or whatever, the answer is the thing that gives you access to something that neither of you's had previously or the relationship that ha didn't, didn't have previously rather than something that continues the same trend or that ends it. Catherine. What's the best way to protect myself and my family at this time? Well, I hope you're okay, Catherine. I hope uh, nothing too bad is happening and it's just a kind of more general question. If it is, make sure to contact the relevant authorities. This is your card. Um, and look after yourself and people, you know, you're putting yourself in the best foot forward for any kind of real world stuff that you can do rather than relying on any sort of charms or magic or dudes off the internet reading cards. The father. <clears throat> father in regards to protection. I would assume then that the role of the father in your in this is is for you to in a sense take that. And the role of the father in this system is that rather than trying to stop the child from putting the hand in the fire. This is a very good extreme example, but it, it would allow the child to get close enough that he burns himself and then may, you know, has, the own, has their, they know, they've learned themselves. That's an extreme example. I'll give a better example, a, a more one that he doesn't sound like a psychopath. Um, that if the child in the relationship um, between the father and the, and, and the child is going through a particular hard time and there's like say, they have to stand up to someone, there's a bully or whatever. The father, rather than going and sorting it out and talking to the bully and making, 
or in talking to the parents or whatever, would be with the child, holding its hand, being there for it while it sorts it out, while he, she sorts it out for themselves. It's about sitting with the person who's going through the breakup and not trying to fix them, just allowing them to have the experience of it, but being there for them. So in that sense, the best protection you can offer yourself and your family <clears throat> is to allow people, let me see, what is it? To allow the experience of whatever's happening to happen without, you know, without trying to fix it, in a sense. And I, I don't really know what that's point because that sounds like terrible advice about protection, just allow this thing to happen. It's like, if, if someone, or I will put it in this way, and this might be relevant, if someone is, say, a drug addict, and the bet, there's just kind of a thing that you have to let that just go through their system, that there's no point in trying to get them to give it up until they're ready. There's no point in trying to get a smoker to stop smoking until they're ready. But you can be there for them and support them, and not indulge them in their, in their kind of a thing. So it's not indulging in fear, not indulging in whatever it is. It's more protecting. I don't know. There's something just not ringing. I, I, I don't get, I'm not getting, and I feel like I'm giving possibly bad advice. But there's something around the father figure of allowing or seeing that sometimes or not, that there is things in life that you just can't control and sometimes you just have to experience them. It's the best I can do. I think that's shitty advice for um, around protection, but it's what the card is saying. I'm just going to uh, interpret it as I see it. I would say protect people as best you can. Get in touch with the authorities if you feel you are actually under any kind of a threat. And um, you look after yourself. If you can stop something from happening, do stop it from happening. That's, so, that's Tommy's advice. Um, I, I suggest you listen to mine more. But maybe the, the something in the father thing will, will, will ring true to you in a way that just doesn't, I just don't get because I don't know your circumstance and I don't know your, uh, what's going on. If it's just a more general kind of how to best, you know, look after my family and stuff like that, it's um, allow people the space to go through whatever they're going through and allow people to uh, have the experiences they're having without trying to fix them. You know, if, if someone in your family is having a hard time with work or whatever, or school or whatever it is, that just to kind of be there for them, but don't try and fix it. Maybe that's what it's trying to say. So, back to earlier Tommy, and uh, over there. Grayson, what servant can help me right now? Most, most help me right now. Um, hope you're doing well, Grayson. Okay, here we go. We have the Contemplator. So I suppose that there's a kind of call possibly to meditation there. I always find out with the Contemplator that there's a kind of a notion of, uh, you know, inner world, inner working and stuff like that. So that is, you know, there's obviously that, that kind of a thing there and kind of just, if you don't have a meditation practice, maybe work on that. But that, that's general advice you, you could literally give to any answer, to any question. But I suppose there's more in this a kind of an allowance of not trying to work something out. You know, it's the left brain, right brain thing, or the consciousness and the, you know, the subconsciousness, the unconscious. Where sometimes you just have to let go of something in order for the other part of your brain to work out what it is or to allow to hear that answer or whatever. And if you want to take that outside of a kind of a material brain thing, it's sometimes you just have to surrender something, as much as I dislike that word, or not that I dislike the word, it's just it can mean so much to, to, to different people. You have to let things go. You just have to stop grasping at something. You kind of have to just let the problem go. You let it flow and whatever for in order for us to um, work out or for all of you to get the answer, the inspiration, the insight, whatever it is that you need for, for it to work out, whatever, to, or to manifest, or to disappear, or to some sort of solution to it. So, I would say that what's the best thing for you now is just to, to not try and work it out, not try and fix it, or not try, mentally, I mean, like, you know, like to actually try and solve it mentally, and just let it go and let the answer come to you. Or if it's not like a particular question, just to let all of it go and let whatever 
be. Hope that helps, Grayson. Spirit. Will my father-in-law finalise the land sale and give my husband his inheritance within the next three months? This is kind of going to be then a yes or no. And when it comes to yes or no questions, what I do is if the card reservatory is mostly positive, then it's a yes. But if it's mostly negative, then we'll go with a no. And here we go. The father. <laughs> That's interesting then, isn't it? Will my father-in-law finalise the land sale? And then the father comes. The father is a fairly neutral card though. There's no obvious yes or no to it. In that it's allowing the natural things to unfold in life. The things that we all have to go through. The rites of passages. But being there for you during them. So I can't get a yes or no from that. I don't know. But it's interesting that the father came up in a bit of question about the father-in-law. I would say then it's undecided. I, it's, it, 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 I don't, you know, it, it could go either way. It hasn't, whatever has to, whatever final decision or whatever thing hasn't been made yet. And it's in his hands, clearly. And it will only, it'll all come down to him and what he, he decides. What he decides is the best. Whatever he decides will be what he thinks is the best for you or, or rather than you know for rather than some sort of selfish motive or for him it'll be what he thinks is best for life as a kind of in, the, in that father mode of sort of holding your hand while going through the worst of times felix hope you're great tommy i'm good but i'm not great but i am good here's my question how should i deal with the role that i am beginning to act out that has just come into my life. Okay, so here we go. That jumped. Protest or speak your truth. Don't be afraid of um, being honest about it. Don't be like, if it turns out it's anger, I don't know what your role is. Um, most of them seem to have some sort of injustice underneath them that's trying to be in, uh, solved. So speak to that and don't be afraid of it. Don't feel that you have to not feel the injustice of it. Uh, uh, I don't know, for example, say you, you, you felt that um, you always end up in a relationship where people condescend to you or talk down to you or something like that. And that uh, if you kind of stand up for yourself, you feel like you're being an asshole. So it's the processor, process, <laughs> the protester is asking you to process. No, it's saying that don't be afraid to stand up for yourself, even in, in the moment if it feels like you're an asshole. Or, let me see, I'll give you another example. Um, if you feel there's something, you know, say you're, you're at work and there's a particular project and you go, I think this is a terrible project, but everyone around you thinks it's a great project. It's a call to stand up and go, I think this is a great or a terrible project. Even if it ends up the project goes ahead and you're just seen as the person who was kind of, you know, oh, you're just spoiling it all, saying, you know, Mr. Negativity or whatever. It's standing up for your, your whatever the role is displaying to you, is rather than immediately thinking it's something that just has to be removed, that I have to um, get rid of or vanquish or solve. Go, what is it telling me? What, what, what is the need that is not being fulfilled? And then stand up for that, speak your truth in that, and solve that. It's the kind of advice I can give you on that. Um, But if you mean like role more in a sense of I've just become a father, say, or I've just become a manager, um, rather than a kind of a shadow role, um, it's again still going to be the same advice and stick to your guns, stick to what you feel is right, stick to your truth, speak your truth, and don't, don't let the, the loud or angrier voices drain you out and not allow you to speak your truth. Okay. There was one final question from Bira that she sent in after uh, I had printed the stuff out. It was to do with doing a ritual, a Saturnian ritual, if I remember correctly. If I'm not, I'm sorry, Bira, but it shouldn't really matter to the thing. And uh, any advice around that? So, let's see what the, the cards have to say to you, Bira. Okay. The fortunate that it will go well and. Uh, so you'll get what you want from it. 
uh, no, <laughs> you'll get what you need from it and it will be overall, it'll be a, a fortunate event. The reason why I change it there is because if it is Saturnian, you mightn't get what you want, but you'll get what you need. <laughs> you certainly will. But uh, yeah, good luck with that. That'll, hopefully it'll uh, work out ultimately in your favour. But the light shines on you, Bira. It shines down upon you. Fortune is ahead. So, good people of the internet, that is the divinations for another month. If you want to get in on the act, you can join up to Patreon. Link is in the show description. And uh, you just send in your questions once a month, usually at the beginning of the month. And, and then we also do like a question and answer thing over there. There's loads of stuff over there. Um, I probably don't sell it as much as I do. I just have that hesitancy about the whole YouTube or podcasting of like and subscribe and ring that bell and all that stuff. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Just want to just make videos and talk to you. That's all. Don't, don't, don't feel <laughs> they need to like or subscribe. Although I'd be happy if you did. So uh, good people of the internet. May you have a wonderful, wonderful month. May the winter or the summer, depending where you are in, in the world, um, bring you goodness and happiness and joy and uh, sanctuary and refuge and retreat and uh, may your best days be ahead be well